Um, hello guys, so I know it's your reading week and you are probably enjoying I don't know the sun out there or something uh, but I thought we would get into something uh, quite critical for you guys to get forward it's uh, let's say it's half theoretical and half practical so as you can see from the screen it's how to set the angle of attack um to the desired angle so we don't always compute simulations where the air, aircraft or the wing or in two dimension and airfoil is <coughs> at uh, angle of attack zero so basically the angle of attack is um, this angle here which is um, commonly denoted as alpha so alpha is angle of attack so you got your wing here and you got your uh, mean line coming from uh, the center and the relative winds angle which cuts the mean line forms an angle of attack and today I'm going to show you how to set up your simulations for certain angle of attacks um, depending on what you need to put so it's uh, usually you use angle of attack um, for from zero until um, 30 or 40 degrees and you go in steps um, of two degrees or four degrees depending on where the wing or the airfoil stalls and different airfoils stall at a different angle of attacks uh, stall means just the loss of the lift force so that happens at the with the increase of uh, angle of attack so if we just quickly go and say um, for an archive 001 lift coefficient 0012 so naka 12 so this is naka 12 at reynolds 3 million and this is some wind tunnel results and some uh, panel core simulations, X foil and Java foil. And so, with the increase in this alpha, the angle of attack, the lift force will increase. Usually, if the airfoil is um, is symmetric, which means it has the similar shape from the main line downwards and upwards about the main line then the lift force at angle of attack zero is zero. So all NACA airfoils uh, like uh, 0012, 0018 is just uh, symmetric airfoils with uh, the thickness changing. So basically you can kind of get an idea of, uh, of the airfoil shape from the name of the airfoil. Uh, and if I put in NACA 00, 12 and 0018 and go into images uh, you see it's something like this uh, so it's just uh, well, this is not Naka airfoils but the idea is that with the increase in the number uh, this thickness here the mean thickness will change so 0018 has 18% of the thickness of the cord length and 0012 has 12% of thickness of the cord length and likewise 0020 has 20% thickness of the cord length so something like that um, you can even create uh, an archive for just using a matlab function or any function that uh, it has a Naka airfoil uh, equation. If we go into that, uh, it will be something like this is a five digit airfoil generator. Uh, so we are looking for something that's four digits. Um, so you, you can go into places like this site airfoiltools.com specify the camber the camber position uh, usually in symmetric airfoil there's no camber so zero 
and thickness you can specify if I put here 0 and 0 and go plot I get an ARCA 12 layer for if I go and put 18% thickness I get a NACA 18 airfoil, which is more 18% thickness, which is more airfoil, uh, more thick airfoil. So it's something like that. Okay, so I got escalated a bit, but coming back to our uh, main thing, the angle of attack setup. Mm, so there's two ways to do this. You either change the angle of the wind or change the angle of the airfoil or the aircraft or the wing. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So I want you to open an Excel file and put uh, angle of calc attack calculator or something like this. And so usually you have a reference velocity, which is your uh, velocity at the inlet and the angle you want. So it can be, I usually create a, create a list of angles like here. Uh, so from angle zero until the 40 something in, in the intervals I wanted. But this is just to show you how you can do it. So it's basically just vectors. Uh, so uh, this is just your input and this is your input as well. Here you put X component as one times cos bracket, radians bracket and choose this input angle for the X component. And for the y component, um, it will be one times sine radians and uh, the angle of attack, which will give you the x component and y component. So remember that for angle of attack zero, you have x one and y zero. But for uh, angle of attack ten, we are getting this. If I change here to angle of attack five, these values will change. And the x velocity and y velocity at the inlet can be calculated just by multiplying the x component into the velocity magnitude and the y component into the velocity magnitude. So if you can just copy those formulas, uh, you will be able to calculate the angle of attack. So while you have that, you also want to compute the lift coefficient. Um, which is going to be, so if your angle of attack is five and influent, you want to put the uh, lift coefficient. You want to calculate the lift coefficient and the drag coefficient. Then uh, that you also need to specify the these vectors X and Y. So for lift coefficient, um, X component will be Um, this one I can't do that I can't copy it so I can just equal to this okay and the y component will be the because it's uh, towards up so the bigger component of the flow and uh, for drag coefficient it will be just the reverse x component will be greater and y component will be different. Basically just copy this um, and put it like like here. Uh, what I recommend you to do is um, before making any simulations just do something simple like this where I have specified more everything I need so that I don't even forget that. Uh, so I have my target y plus which is one uh, which is okay and the total elements that I want to use. Uh, so from the mesh, you can just, it's it's kind of like a reminder. So you can put your, put your heading like uh, my simulation one, so that you don't lose any data or forget what you have done. So it's, uh, if I said to you, like, calculate the lift coefficients for NACA 12 for angle of attack from 0 to 40 in intervals of 2 degrees, you can say NACA 001 to uh, simulation 1 and just give a date or something. 
six eleven two thousand seventeen. Okay, so the first silk y height we can copy from point wise y plus calculator, the the one we used before. So uh, I think you're quite familiar with that website now. Y plus calculator. So I want my y plus to be one. I have a specific velocity standard conditions for density velocity and I have a certain reference length and I'm going to calculate that the Reynolds number and the this spacing here I can just copy and paste it here. I'm not going to do that because uh, we already have some simulation uh, results. But the input velocity you can copy from here uh, as well. This so basically this 30 is going to come here. And the raw value, the density you can copy from here and the dynamic viscosity which is mu I call it mu so it's 1.8 minus 5 and the total <laughs> turbulence viscosity ratio which can be either 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 which you put in uh, fluent and uh, from that you can get the Reynolds number uh, if you specify the code length here if I change here this value will change so the Reynolds number is um, is C9 which is uh, sorry C9 which is the ref reference length times C15 which is the oh sorry C9 is the density times the reference length times the uh, velocity divided by the dynamic viscosity C10 will give you the Reynolds number so that's all you you need from this uh, section you can even calculate uh, uh, the if you want to calculate pitching moment for an airfoil and you specify the chord length then you can just go here and so usually for a symmetric airfoil the, the center of moment is at quarter chord so for naka airfoil uh, if the reference length is one times 1 by 4 it will be 0.25 if this was 2 it will be 0.5 so these settings are some stuff that you don't need uh, the k at the inlet and omega this is something i was doing for open form so again you can use the x component and y component uh, you can just uh, make up a table like this from 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 here and just uh, create certain angle of it x create the x and y component create the x and y velocities depending on this input so this can be anything so it can be 30 times so or depending on the inlet velocity so multiplied by x multiplied by y and then you have your in inlet velocities for certain angle of it x so x components multiplied by uh, sorry x uh, the velocity magnitude multiplied by the x components give you the x inlet velocity values and y uh, velocity magnitude which is also 40 in this case times the y component gives you the y velocities at the inlet depending on the angle of attack um, so if you do change the so this way is called changing the changing the component of the wind or changing the angle of attack by changing the way the air is coming at the wing uh, there's other ways to do it too and if you do that it's a more physical representation of of uh, of what's happening so here i got the naka 12 airfoil mesh and if I just go here and um, you can go to blocking, transform blocks, rotate blocks, and just don't select anything in this case. Just say transform geometry also because you want to transform the geometry too. And then we are going to rotate it in Z direction. And it will be minus uh, angle. So I want to rotate it minus 10. Uh, from the centroid okay so if I click apply now 
you will see that the uh, airfoil is now set up for angle of attack 10. So, yeah. And then in this case, you don't need to specify the, uh, the X inlet velocity and the Y inlet velocity will be, will be just uh, 40 and zero or 30 and zero because we, we already have the uh, airfoil uh, in the correct angle of attack and you don't even need to change the, the components for lift and drag coefficient when you calculate them in fluent. So I hope that was clear and it's quite uh, critical that you understand how to do this because uh, as aerodynamics simulation engineers, you will need to compute not just for not like how you do in pipe flow or something, just do one simulation and finish the results. You will have to do for every airflow, you have to do a for various angles of attacks and see where the lift is going down, where the drag is increasing, where the pitching moment is uh, falling or going negative. So I hope that was clear.